What's up guys? Welcome back to the Montyverse. Today we are doing another She-Hulk episode reaction and joining me as always is Nikki back for episode 5 of She-Hulk. Hey, uh, last week's was amazing. Arguably the best of the series so far, so I'm really excited going into this one. Yeah, let's not even hesitate. Let's get right into this because I'm so excited to wake up and watch these episodes every Thursday morning, so let's do it. She-Hulk, episode 5, Mean Green, and straight poured into these jeans. Alright, let's do it, guys. I don't trust this guy. And the fact that they're showing him again in the oh. previews. Yeah, that's a good point. That gives something away that's important. Yeah. Listen, how is it possible that in one appearance, Titania is already one of the best villains <laughs> in the MCU? I, I just love, I love the pettiness here. She-Hulk by Titania. Be strong, be beautiful, <laughs> own who you are. She-Hulk by Titania. Oh, <laughs> oh damn, Jem. You're pretty ripped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she could copyright it without doing anything, so that's impressive. Oh, Chad. No, I'm not signing those. What do you mean? Jem. The way trademark works is whoever gets there first. I love how Chet's about to mansplain the law to Jem. Yep. She Hulk by Titanium. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. She tweeted that she'd be here connecting with her fans all afternoon. Wait, you follow her? It's for a snake venom lip plumber. She's literally selling snake oil. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound Beauty pleasant snake. at all. Beauty oil. I'm so sorry, little child. <laughs> way back there. I don't want to touch. <laughs> oh, get over it, Jennifer. The name's She-Hulk. It's mine. Could you take a photo of us? Oh my god, yeah. No. Back up. Just give eyes. me some space. <laughs> You're taking the photo? Just one. Just one, and that is it. Over it. <laughs> You're crushing your stapler. What? Sneaker drop. The Iron Man are coming out. One pair for custom. Oh, wow. That little Easter egg from episode two. I respect that. As a collector, I respect that. Collect shoes to look at that you're never going to wear. I respect that. I'm not going to do She also respects that. have some. What? Shorts. Drip broker. It's like the power broker, but actually good this time. <laughs> imagine, imagine it's just Sharon Carter again. <laughs> imagine she just shows up. You're right. You're right. <laughs> good guy, Pug. Nikki and Pug have great chemistry. <laughs> I'm over it. I really am. This is a boba cafe. Alonzo says that it's boba. a superhero clothing business. Like Bo. I know, I get it. <laughs> the drip broker. He sent me. Woman <laughs> pusher jing cha. I'm not Chinese. Wait, I was sick when I cops. I feel so much shame. <laughs> He's mad. I send it home. Okay. <laughs> Come to the back. You need. I got everything. Captain America shield, Thor hammer. This is this is Avengers. You don't like Avengers? I got Avengers. Oh, with an I. Question. <laughs> if you're not the guy, then do you know who the guy is? So you, do you know the guy? Ooh, got him. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll truck. buy one of your Avengers t-shirts. And a matching hat. Yes, of course. I want to complete the ensemble. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Titania referred me. <laughs> I saw you shrug. Rejected. <laughs> okay, I think I have a theory who this may be. I can still see you. Who do you think you, who, you have a theory? Who do you think this is? A She-Hulk booty boost smoothie. <laughs> oh, so that's not actually me. I mean, isn't that on well, them for not thinking about that? Mmm. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Tony I Stark definitely to trademarked this, everyone's name. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm surprised and relieved you aren't foolish enough <gasps> to try to represent yourself. At least you know that face. Mallory name. Book. This is the person who <laughs> legally outmaneuvered you. Key. <laughs> yeah. Savage. I was 
Close she back. always looks fabulous, though. You obviously spend a yeah. lot of time thinking about what you're going to wear. Why don't you help Walters with her? <laughs> uh, I'm actually already on top of that. Oh, I don't think I really need that. You do. Mm. <laughs> Love how even her lawyer is taking pictures of her. Ooh. All right. Burn. In order to sell her non-FDA approved sham <laughs> products. <laughs> we asked the court to grant our motion. I love the reaction. Judgment. Is trying to say is that She Hulk was not. It, you can sit down. <laughs> is trying to say. Recess until Thursday. <laughs> Why is she afraid of her? She can kick her Department ass again. She Hulk. Cause she just, uh, just the savagery of it. He told him you're an Avenger. The confidence, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's what's his God. face. That's uh. Is the Hag convention in town? Griffin Matthews from the flight attendant. <laughs> Never heard of you. My client list is very exclusive. <laughs> As a Pixar expert, yeah, who does that remind you of? Oh, um, Edna Mode. Her? Okay. Is this really necessary? <laughs> I just want you to make me a new suit. Dad, I just need a business suit. <laughs> Everything I make stands up to the highest. Combat standards. I don't make basic shit. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand really any of that. A lawyer. She's a lawyer. a lawyer. That's so cute. I love that. That's so cute for her. This one. Small. <laughs> Impish. <laughs> Large. Superhero. Do you think you could design a suit that would adapt to both of my bodies? I mean, come on. Have you ever done a Hulk before? <laughs> I need. Oh, God. Nipples. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just like the Why bat nipples. Not in fashion. Why did you have to be so mean? It's cool to be mean. That's pretty fun. I knew it! I freaking oh, no. knew it! I don't I trust that dude. I, the fetish. I know her. Yeah. Of course you do. I'm one of the biggest. Yeah. Just had a meeting with my favorite lady lawyer. No touching. Lady lawyer. Not just lawyer. No, is, is it just okay. me or she's way more condescending and misogynistic than he was on their date? So I think so. Quickly. His issue with his date was just weirdly invasive. Yes, I yeah. think It's how I win this case. By parading all the questionable men that you dated in front of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that can be embarrassing. Oh my god, I love her outfits. I love how she's intentionally only wearing green. This connection. Mmm, this guy. We had a great date. She battled demons. I mean, come on. Jennifer Walters, aka She Hulk. <laughs> Motion for summary judgment is granted. This isn't over, hater. <laughs> <laughs> Get into it. Fine, you can buy me things. <laughs> <laughs> and it's putting them to good use. You deserve better. Aww. Women supporting women. Love to see it. Uh, say thanks? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any other lawyers who, who sips a shot. I don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i guilty of it. Under the bus. So happy we're friends now. <laughs> what? Did I? <laughs> Thanks for the drink. I thought you were getting better clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my clothes. <laughs> I love how it's this nice little. Uh... Oh, yeah, we got to hey, wrap Luke. up the B plot. <laughs> Here? Ooh, I like it. Of course you do, because I'm a genius. I made you a little something extra. Mm. Ooh. Is it the mm. purple fitted one, you think? Yeah. I don't know that I'll really have an occasion. Just say thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you. Hello. We should be left. Tinsley, does client confidentiality mean nothing to you? <gasps> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, ah. I'm just bummed because now I wanted to wa see her wear them. I know, right? I, I, wait, you, we just saw Daredevil's helmet and your first reaction is, I wanted to see Jen. Well, because we already know what he's going to look like. I don't know what her <laughs> nice suits are all going to look like. Fair enough. I, I mean, I guess fair enough. <laughs> Sorry. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, I just I really love the uh, the Edna Mode vibes that Luke was uh, throwing out this episode. Uh, I I I'm so dumb. That just went over my head. But the way that they portrayed him was wonderful. I mean, I, I, like 
even from like the speakerphone because she also does that at like the gate. Yeah. Like they do that same thing. So I, so this is definitely a very heavy homage oh. to Edna Mode, if a, anything. A great one to do. For oh my god, look at this guy. He's got the shield boot bust. She Oh, the Iron Man 3s. Oh, well, well uh, all right. I'm gonna have to go back to that because there's a lot of Shoes. Easter eggs. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, and that's what's fun about these credits is the fact that they can actually differentiate them this much. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love the whole design of the credits. I love the, now. I'm wondering if the guy on the phone changes ever. I don't think so. Probably not, but now that's, that's a, a good question. question. Yeah, uh, we got to keep an eye out next week. Yeah, because a lot of these, they seem like they seem, stay the same, but that seems like the best opportunity if they wanted to sneak something in. Yeah. All right, let's see this post credit scene. Or not. Or I guess there's not a post credit scene <laughs> this episode. Never All right. mind. All right, I guess we'll go F ourselves. Um, probably. All right. All right. I guess not. I guess not. I guess there, there's no post grad scene. Okay. Okay. But anyway. But anyway. Okay. That episode. It was. It was short. It felt short. Yeah. I definitely um. Felt the time fly on this one. Mm -hmm. More so than any of the other ones. Like it was um. No, it just went by so quick. Yeah. I don't know if I was just having fun, too much fun with the episode. It definitely, I, I, you know what this episode felt like? It felt like a setup episode. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it was filler because it's definitely not filler. But it wasn't like super high octave action or anything. Like, even though we got the most of Titania we've had in the series since the first episode, yeah. it kind of felt like, I mean, she even said herself like, this isn't over, hater. Um, yeah. So obviously expecting to see her again, maybe in a more action-packed capacity next time. Versus yeah. like this was kind of just setting up like the reason for them to have beef like further than the first episode. Oh yeah, even. and it de it definitely brings Titania back, which is great because we needed Titania to come back after episode one. Mm -hmm. It also sets up a bunch of things for the next couple of episodes, I think, because. Mm -hmm. We get a pretty substantial tease at the end of this episode for a certain someone. So I think I think it's setting a lot of things up. I, I feel like we're going to be seeing Luke again. And I wonder if this is Luke Jacobson, the very obscure character from the Dakota North comics in Marvel Comics. Um, I'd have to look that up. Future Pat, if you're doing the edit and that is the case, do me a favor and put a picture of him right here from the comics. Thanks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he's a cool new character that I really like. I, I like Griffin Matthews. I think he's a standout in The Flight Attendant, which I do watch. Mm -hmm. So, I think that this that was a really fun new character. Obviously, a heavy-handed reference to Edna Mode um, from The Incredibles, in case you guys are wondering. I know. If only they had an excuse to have him talk about capes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, who knows? We may get that. We may get that later on. Mm -hmm. Uh... But this also gives us a lot more Mallory book, which I think we needed. I think mm -hmm. we needed... Uh, Mallory has, has, if nothing, just been a, a character that popped up here and there yeah. in, the, in the first four episodes. She's in them. Yeah, she's definitely there. But I think this one kind of really sets up the Jen-Mallory dynamic and kind of squashes that original tension that they have. And now they're kind of like... While they, they may not be the best of friends, there's but definitely a mutual respect there they're connecting on a lot of levels i mean literally just talking about like the same kind of issues that they both experience yeah. both professionally and personally with men and their perception and like that i think the way they portray that was really nice yeah because i think mallory is such a very and they didn't, they didn't really do a great job of portraying this in the show but in the comics like her her reputation precedes herself like when you when you first meet her mm -hmm. she's very talented she barely loses a case in her entire career you know mm. she's presented as the lawyer a lawyer to a top tier lawyer amongst lawyers and in this show she, the way that she carries herself is mm -hmm. like that but i don't think you have really seen that and i think this episode jen she 
earns the respect of Mallory Book because Mallory Book being at the top of her profession mm -hmm. and then seeing Jen turn around and do something that she would never do or, or the men in their uh, line uh, of work wouldn't yeah. do. So I think that there's definitely an earning of the respect there. Mm -hmm. And of course, Renee Elise Goldsberry is absolutely fantastic. I was waiting for you to mention that. <laughs> Which, like, like I said, I'm a little, I'm even more biased now because I've started watching Girls 5 Eva, also directed by Kat Coiro, um, which she's also fantastic in. But I love the way that she portrays her in this and just how confidently and how well she carries herself yeah. in this role. And obviously very different from Angelica. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> um... Pug and Nikki. Yes. The, uh, again, so back to back, we get <laughs> Wongers and Madison. Mm -hmm. And then this episode, we get Pug and Nikki. And those are two highly powerful, high chemistry, like pairings that I absolutely love. Like the B plot was very entertaining <laughs> this episode. I, I know. It, it made me want Boba Tea for a hot minute. I like that Pug's a, a sneakerhead. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Um,. I love that uh, they found a way to uh, give Nikki more to do than just mm -hmm. kind of be just like the the sassy friend character. Yeah. And you show that she's like very capable in her own ways. So mm -hmm. while Jen may be, Jen ha is the lawyer and Jen is the the front person in the in the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikki's not. Yeah, yeah, Dennis. Like, don't sleep on paralegals. Yeah, uh, Nikki's very, very capable, and she's very, very uh, good. I, I really enjoyed her this episode. I enjoyed the pairing, mm -hmm. and I, I just had to mention that. But I think the standout for me this episode is definitely Jamila Jamil. It, that's which is so crazy because it's like this is a very Titania heavy episode, and I still wish we had more of her. She's so good, and. Like, I know people, here's the thing, I know this, she's gonna get hate, cause, because people are gonna go, why is she so cringe, why is she, that's the point, that it's intentionally cringe. I was gonna say, like, her portrayal as this image-obsessed, shallow influencer seems extraordinarily on point. Like, there was yeah. nothing about that where I was like, even if it's cringe, it's like, yeah, but this feels right. And she has a perfect... Like, cause that's the thing with the Valley accent, right? You, you don't want to be too, too over the top, but she's just over the top enough. Right, like, like she's enter she's entertaining, she's playing a character, yeah. but that person absolutely exists in real life. 100%, we all know a Titania. We all know that person who's way too into themselves, who's way too stuck up. Yeah. And just the, just the pet, like, honestly, I love this modern interpretation of a Titania so <laughs> much because in the comics, we would get like Titania and Hulk face each, uh, She Hulks face each other, stare each other down, and then they punch each other. Punch, 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 punch. But in She Hulk, we're getting Titania and She Hulk facing off in opposite sides of the courtroom, mm -hmm. and Titania making all of these faces. And it just, she's going, she went from being like this petty, brute ish character in the comics to being this petty, highly successful influencer in the MCU. Mm -hmm. And she fights She-Hulk using power, but a different kind of power mm -hmm. than in in the comic book. Then a straight punch him up, and and I really, really like it. Like I re I'm enjoying this interpretation, this reinvention of Titania, mm -hmm. if you will, for the MCU. I was gonna say, like, this touches on probably her the most in this episode, but also kind of across the board. I love the costume design that the show has had, but especially in this episode, because. She looked incredible, and I, I'm definitely a sucker for Nikki's outfits, as Mallory noted, but I, it's just interesting the way they do it. They've done everything so far, and of course, I'm excited for when we do eventually see what Luke yeah. created. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just to mention the costume styling, like, even the four douchey <laughs> dates like uh, that were put on trial, all of their outfits represent the kind of person they are. Like, you see someone uh. wearing the outfit they're wearing, mm -hmm. and, and you just kind of know what, yeah. what their personality is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the costume designs here are stellar. All of the Titania's outfits are, were so ridiculously over the top. And I and I love, again, the pettiness of Titania, she's just <laughs> always wearing green this episode, right. as opposed to her normal pinks and purples that we see her in, or golds. Uh, so that, it, that to me was... I 
top notch. I also like at the end of the last episode, I didn't assume that she necessarily used the name because you can trademark something, I think, without necessarily putting oh. it into use. But so the, that's the point. Right. So the fact that like not only did she use it, but she made sure, like you said, to like rub it in her face as much as humanly possible, both with the product line and then with the um, podcast. Um, sponsorship it's like jeez yeah and I, I love the fake commercial at the beginning of the episode it definitely gave me Tropic Thunder uh, Zoolander vibes I know and again it's like the kind of thing where it's like shoot like this is so stupid but it's also like yeah yeah I was almost expecting like Derek Zoolander to <laughs> pop up in the background and be like I'm a man you know um, I just it's so good it's just the little things this show does it's I think that like <laughs> If you're going to nitpick about this series, the one thing that people are probably going to nitpick about, because again, people are going to nitpick about this show because they have nothing better to do, would probably be the legal scenes, and they're not really right. the best. But at the same time, this is a comedy series. This is not a legal drama. It, it also has to have like a good pace to it. Like, it has to be snappy. It can't... Yeah, if they want to talk about like the actual any kind of legal precedent or jargon or anything like to elaborate on it i mean they could but they also are contained to a half hour yeah so this they, show is very fast paced yeah so they kind of they need to give us what we need to under to basically understand but at the same time it's like it's not a procedural at the same time oh absolutely yeah and the show so far has done a good job of juggling that mm -hmm. the only thing i would say is that a lot of the episodes do feel very, very fast, almost too fast. Yeah. Um, which I would probably say of this episode. It felt very, very fast. I almost have whiplash. We, mm -hmm. we, we kind of just were in and out so quickly. But hey, it was a hell of a ride, and I laughed my butt off the mm -hmm. entire time. <laughs> so it's not like I didn't enjoy the episode. I, I really did enjoy it, it, and I wouldn't say it was a bad episode either. You, you just wanted more of it. Yeah, even I just like want just, more of a good thing. Even just five or ten minutes more. Yeah, just a little breathing room. Maybe, maybe another scene with Mallory, mm -hmm. like a scene in between the two courtroom scenes of her going like, hey, Jen, you, we got to figure out how to... Or, right. Or even just developing her more, like even if it's not related to the case, yeah. just... Just, just something, because there was room for it. It didn't feel... Because a lot of these other shows have had very long episodes, and sometimes, like, you could feel it. This doesn't feel it at all. Yeah. All right. I have a picture. I put up on my screen while we were talking a picture of the of Pug Sneaker Room <gasps> with all of his displayed sneakers. And listen, you, you got to respect it. As you someone who's obviously a collector, I definitely respect his neatness, but... I, we need to talk about the first one on the right. On okay. the right, far right. Okay, I'm just going to list out all of them. Yeah. I'm, but... I'm just going to list all of the sneakers here. Um, I'm going to rattle off the ones I see very quickly. And then future me is going to put a picture of it in the edit. But right off the bat, I see Daredevil, Doctor Strange, Falcon, Hulk, Ghost Rider, Nova, um, Namor the Submariner, Electro... Spider-Man, Moon Knight, Captain Marvel, Green Goblin, or Jack-O-Lantern, one of the two, um, Leapfrog, Hawkeye, Wolverine, The Thing, Vision, Cyclops, yeah, and then Black Panther, Storm, or, or could possibly Cable, uh, America Chavez, or Captain America, and then Deadpool. The Deadpool one caught my eye immediately. I was like, "What are you talking?" About? I was just to say it. Oh, sorry. Just, uh, I mean, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at 55 sneakers. Well, I didn't. Real, I didn't know you were gonna be able to rattle off that many and so easily. I think easily. that's Thor. I think that one's Thor. Yeah, I agree. Um, Things has the realms on it. Yeah, and but <laughs> there's there's probably a couple here I missed, but that, I'm sure someone on the internet will correct me. I mean, I think I thought that was very impressive just offhand. Well, they did it. They helped me out by putting a lot of the logos on most of these. That's fair. Um, and then color core, like a lot of these are like that's obviously the thing. That's obviously yeah. vision. It's got the diamond on there. Cyclops is a massive giveaway. Yeah, I mean, whoever designed these fake sneakers that mean absolutely nothing and are just a fun little Easter egg for us fans, you did an amazing job. Yes. Yeah, because the it's just they they just pop like and, honestly. And again. Props to all the fashion designers out there. Like, I, if, if I was told, like, hey, we're gonna make a sneaker out of Cyclops, it's like, okay. 
And wait, wait, before someone corrects me, Iron Man. Because I forgot to say Iron Man and you know someone in the comments is going to be like, you didn't say Iron well, Man. I, which, again, that's part, front and center literally said in the episode. But I get what where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, and I love how they're based off of the armor from Iron Man 3, too. Yeah. You know what would have been great? If there was like a joke um, in here, like, yeah, you know, the first uh, people really love the first Iron Man sneakers. The second ones were OK. And the third ones are a little are, are apparently a little divisive. Like, that's the kind of joke I would expect in She-Hulk. But uh, I don't know, maybe next episode. Who knows? Again, this is why they need more time. Yeah. Because who knows what they cut? Maybe it was a cut joke for all we know. Maybe. And speaking of comic books, I've been cooking up a theory last week because th this guy there's something about this guy todd um yeah the the creep the the one who was like listing all her powers and yeah. interrogating her about them when i rewatched episode four this guy just rubbed me the wrong way and it it was less of a date and more of an interrogation definitely i definitely got those vibes the first time but watching it again it's like yeah there's there's more yeah. Then meets the eye going on with, with old Toddy Boy over here. Well, we also know for a fact that he's a client of the firm. Yeah, well we get that information this episode. Now now I'm now I'm building like now my gears are There's... turning right now. Because the main the main villain that everyone was speculating for the series was the leader. And yes. I think now after D twenty three it's safe to say he's not going to be the main villain of this show because mm -hmm. we know Tim Blake Nelson's coming back for Captain America 4. Mm -hmm. And he's, he'll be reprising the role of the leader. But that doesn't mean he's not going to be the mastermind, like I've been saying. He's not going to be the guy in the shadows right. of this thing. And what's interesting to me with these Disney Plus shows uh, is that they reinvent a lot of uh, things from Marvel Comics. And I was thinking about how they reinvented the clandestine for Miss Marvel from mm -hmm. the comic books. They're completely... They're a group of characters in the comics, but they completely reinvented them from their mm -hmm. MCU debut. Yeah. So, um, and to my credit, some this has been all over the internet. Uh, this group, uh, this group showing up, but I don't think anyone's really presented it this way. So, um, I think that this show may be the beginning uh, of introducing the MCU's version of the Intelligentsia, which is a group. Uh, it's essentially like a evil group of villains that was formed by the leader mm -hmm. and, it, and it's essentially he puts together a team of what he considers to be some of marvel's smartest villains right like him modok baron zemo you know um you have the the thinker no not the thinker that's the flesh um <laughs> you uh, i'm blanking right now but i will i will insert more names uh i'm sure but uh but yeah, he's put, he puts together a group of the smartest people and they uh, do smart people things. Mm -hmm. And we we, we kind of see that this show is very open about kind of targeting the incel, mm -hmm. anti-female audience that is triggered by this show's very existence or mm -hmm. you know you, you know you, you know who we're talking about yeah. you, you know who we're talking about. <laughs> if you made it this far i would assume so and now we get in this episode that what, what really kind of brought me to this is that we see the wrecking crew and they're yeah. very misogynistic like oh you're all showing out your powers like who told you to show off your powers you know you're asking for it right i was about to say and they didn't come off very smart no very dumb very very misogynistic now we get todd all of a sudden you know mm -hmm. very misogynistic this episode my lady lawyer you know he has incelish behavior he doesn't know how to appropriate appropriately touch yeah. a woman i <laughs> I wonder if the uh, MCU intelligentsia could be a a group of men that think they are the smartest people <laughs> on the planet, but they're really not. Right. And and they're working for someone like the leader mm -hmm. who who had who is scheming, and and maybe he even dubs them the intelligentsia mm -hmm. uh, because. What, now, like, what I'm thinking is, uh, based off of 
how the Wrecking Crew had these enchanted Asgardian weapons, and we had the Asgardian Light Elf in, right. in Episode 2. I, I suspected that whoever is connected to the main overarching plot of the series has to be involved in the law firm somehow, has to have some connection to JLK and H. And now we know that Todd is a client. And I keep saying Todd. I hope this guy's name is Todd. I don't <laughs> remember 100%. But he, he has to have some connection to the client. And now we know he's very rich. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the biggest clients over there. So it was probably very easy for him to run into the light elf in, in, in at the law firm and then pay to get these enchanted weapons. Right. You know, and... If, I, if memory serves me correctly, I believe one of the members of the Wrecking Crew was Mast. The one that does attempt to stab Jen with, mm -hmm. the, with the needle. Yeah. Um, so what if Todd was the masked member of the Wrecking Crew? What if he would... Because why, why keep a mask? Like, they all mm -hmm. wear masks in the comics, but why only have one of them wear a ski mask right. in the show if not to set up a big reveal? Right. Like, later on, right? The only thing I'm wondering is, like, because now it's been a while since we've seen them. So, for me, until you brought, brought them up, they were a little bit out of sight, out of mind. Which could be the intention. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do since they're obviously at some point going to reference yeah. them again and bring them back. Yeah, they, they, this is not... The, we are not done seeing the Wrecking Crew yet, I don't believe. Or at least reference them. Um, I mean, they brought back the Iron Man 3s, which was which was literally a throwaway thing. <laughs> like episode, a while ago. In uh, like a newspaper clipping in episode two, and they brought it back as like a part of the B-plot of mm -hmm. this episode. So I wouldn't be surprised. And it also opens the door for us to get new versions of the Wrecking Crew. Like, I, I really love this idea that I had <laughs> that the Wrecking Crew, if they do make another appearance, um, they do take some version of... Of a, of a super serum created from maybe like Hulk blood or, or some other way. Mm -hmm. And they go from these scrawny like guys into they become these big jacked celebrities. Like we have like Terry Crews and like <laughs> Joe Manganiello like playing the beefed up version of the Wrecking <laughs> Crew. Uh, so that's interesting. And I think that, the, that all of these little breadcrumbs that we're getting, like I think the whether it's the Intelligentsia or whether it's just the Wrecking Crew and Titania, whether Titania is the main villain, I do think the leader's going to be involved somehow, mm -hmm. and I do think that the leader being involved here and then being involved in Captain America 4 will definitely lead us into a World War Hulk movie, mm -hmm. because I think what Marvel's doing now is they're, everything doesn't lead to one thing anymore. Right. So instead of every movie leading to... The next one. The, the next big Avengers event, which I'm sure they all are, I think some things are going to lead to other... Like how right. Miss Marvel... I'm sure is building towards Secret Wars, but is also building towards the Marvels. Right. And how WandaVision built towards those the Marvels. And those properties connect to that big movie. So I think She-Hulk is going to connect to Captain America 4, which mm -hmm. is going to connect to a Hulk movie that we're going to get. And I think th that's how we're going to start seeing uh, Marvel do these mini story arcs mm -hmm. that lead into these small story arcs that lead into this big story arc that leads into a big event mm -hmm. comic which is how comic books are you know you have your single issues you have your complete stories and then you have your event comics mm -hmm. if you will yeah so that's my rant for this episode that's my comic book rant i mean that was also very impressive to think of that offhand like that it's we do these very early <laughs> so it's very hard to get the brain working again um, all things considered you did a fantastic job at least i thought so. and now so many people are flaming me like for not mentioning the leader early on and i'm just like yeah i get it the leader like i always assumed the leader was going to show up but now we have confirmation that he's going to be one of the main if not the main villain no uh, one, they never said he was the main villain which i found interesting at d23 right they said he was returning they just said he was returning um so I don't, I don't think he's going to be the main. I think that's almost confirmation that he's not going to be the main villain here, which I never thought he was going to be anyway. So right. then you just start thinking about, you th you go from there. So you take that piece of information, then you backtrack. Okay, the leader, the intelligentsia, the intelligentsia is involved in World War Hulk. The intelligentsia creates the Red Hulk. So mm -hmm. I think that we're going to get the Red Hulk. So I th I think the intelligentsia is going to be involved somehow mm -hmm. in the mcu version of of this story 
Mm -hmm. but we don't have all the pieces yet. This is me just like throwing, <laughs> just throwing things at the wall right now. Yeah, we still, still have four more to go. Yeah. We still have time. Daredevil, it's coming back. Right. I'm I, thinking he's back. I'm thinking he's back. I think why I wasn't as like engrossed by that is just because it's like, we all know that already. So it's like, to me, it wasn't a reveal at this yeah. point. Like, anyone who's been watching any of the trailers is aware of it. Yeah, and I think people are going to be a little thrown. Um, we know Daredevil gets his suits made. Mm -hmm. He usually gets them made from Melvin Potter um, in the Daredevil series. Mm -hmm. But we he got arrested in Season 3. And I'm assuming he still is in a New York jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and even, even if they want to retcon that and, and he's not in jail, uh, maybe he just needs an L.A. suit. Maybe he's yeah. in L.A. and he's... he's working in LA for a little while taking yeah. on clients in LA and he's like I need uh, need daredevil stuff and yeah. he goes to Mr. Edna Mode and he's like uh Luke Jacobson suit. it's like make <laughs> me a suit and uh and then yeah he's got a suit so I don't think I don't think he's betraying Melvin for people that are worried <laughs> Uh, cause we all, I love Melvin. I liked, I liked Melvin and Potter. If he needs a suit, he needs to get a suit. Yeah, he needs, he needs a suit. Need a suit, get a suit. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm sure that there are Easter eggs in that scene that I missed. There was nothing that jumped out at me, so I'm not gonna say anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the, the obvious reference to Batman and Robin and <laughs> with the nipple suit. Bat nipples. The Joel Schumacher Batman films. But outside of that, yeah, nothing that really hit me in the face. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the barcode this episode, but if it is there, I'm sure it's tied to a Titania comic, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all all for my Easter egg roundup. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the pretty fun episode. Yes. I'm like, man, what did we talk about? And I'm like, well, we've been talking for a while. We talked about it pretty <laughs> yeah. much everything. I know, right? There's a lot. There's a lot, but the show's given us a lot, though. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun, like, like like I said, this is a setup episode. It's setting up so much. Mm -hmm. um, it, it helped build relationships. It, it helped, you know, reintroduce it, us to side characters. It helped set up storylines for the next couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, for people who say like, we're five episodes in and we're not building in to anything, we're building to something. Just yeah. you know, be patient. You know, they're they're they're. they're throwing they're intentionally putting things in front of us mm -hmm. on per like it, well intentionally on right it's also a nine episode show it's not like the majority of them where they had to do it quicker yeah they have time like we talked about like yeah the episodes themselves are short but there's also more of them so in a way it kind of balances out to where yeah we're five episodes meaning for most shows we would be almost over already but we do still have the time yeah and also like I'm thinking now, I'm thinking now, I'm thinking more about this in my head. Also, another reason why the intelligentsia could work is because this, uh, this phase, phase four and, and phase five are building towards the brainier heroes of the MCU. You know, right. we're, intru we're introducing or reintroducing like the smarter heroes. We have we have Zemo coming back. Uh, he came back already in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He's probably coming back again in the Thunderbolts. Yeah, you can't fool me, Marvel. I know he'll be there. Um, we have. Doctor Doom potentially coming. We have Modoc coming in Quantumania, and now we have the leader coming back. So you do have all of the chess pieces to a MCU version of the, in the Intelligentsia. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did show up somewhere. And end of my TED talk. <laughs> it's a good one though. Okay, but uh, unless you have anything else, I think that we should wrap this up. <laughs> No, I, I think we covered a lot. You especially covered a lot. Yeah, but all covered of it is of good. Ground. All of it's good, and I'm. It'll be interesting to see what the, this leads into. Like you said, setting a lot up to see what they do bring in for the next episode, and what do they save a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this episode of She-Hulk, guys. Nikki, where can the people find you? You can find me at Twitter and other social media at EggLordNikki. And you guys can find me here at The Montyverse on all these social platforms at The Montyverse everywhere. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell because we have tons of content coming your way. We have content here and there and underneath this desk over here. It's all over the place and we're just sending it your way all the time. Until next time, guys, stay versed.